Hi, it's Darnell with Way Over Recipes. And this is my 30 day review of the Ninja Foodie Smart XL Pro Grill and Griddle. Now, if you're looking for a review with test cooks, with measurements, with temperature testing, with comparisons with other models of this grill, then please see my initial review where all of that is done. In this 30 day review, I do a follow up where I talk about my experiences with the cooker after using it for a month, my thoughts and impressions, and my thoughts over time of how it compares to some other cookers. But this is not where the cooks are done. So if that's what you're looking for, I'm letting you know up front, check out my initial review of this cooker that's already on this channel. Now, I do have my notes here. And so I'll be basically trying to, Lord willing, make sure that I don't miss anything that I want to tell you. But generally speaking, this cooker, it's a good and a versatile cooker. I will say the only thing that I wasn't very really impressed with is its baking capability. But I'll get into that a little later. And basically I enjoy using it for everything as far as all the different cooking features. I really did enjoy using the cooker overall. So, basically, uh, there's one little nit that I have with this cooker, though, that is very annoying, and I'll say I really don't like it. The one thing that I don't like about this cooker is that it does not remember previous settings from an earlier cook. So, when you're using the same cooker every day, all the time, and you're using, a lot of times, similar settings, or maybe the same settings, for one thing and then another thing. It's very annoying when a cooker doesn't remember the settings and you've got to go in and spin and spin and spin to the same time and spin and spin and spin to the same temperature. That is major league annoying. That's the, I mean, as far as real big problems I have with the cooker, it's that, that it does not remember what you cooked the last time. I really like when a cooker remembers the previous settings and I can just, if I need to adjust, adjust from the previous settings that it remembers. Ninja's other cookers remember settings. Why didn't they make this cooker remember settings? I don't know what's going on with the teams in Ninja. Why they don't coordinate, collaborate, and work together better to say, hey, this is a great idea. Why don't we have all our cookers remember settings and everybody just make sure that you work together and if you don't know how to put it into the grill. Hey, the folks who made the XL oven know how to do it. Why don't you work with them and make sure you have that setting in here? I don't know why they don't do it. It's annoying as heck. But that, you know, if there's something to complain about this cooker, it's that, that it doesn't remember the settings. And I guess a cooker not remembering, remembering settings wouldn't be so bad, so bad if you could just type things in on like a keypad or something really quick. When you've got to spin, 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 spin. When it defaults to every time about 30 some minute, minutes for a setting, and all you want is five minutes, you gotta spin all the way down to five minutes. Okay, I'll stop. Moving on. <laughs> this cooker is a very hot end cooker, meaning that basically compared to other cookers, it cooks very hot. It gets up, you know, very good high temps. So it cooks things really hot, gets things done really well. Now, the way that things are sealed inside of the dome here, things stay very well sealed in. So your heat's gonna stay in there really good. You're not gonna have issues with heat loss. It retains and holds and maintains temp very well. Even after I'm done a cook, I can leave this lid open and things still stay pretty hot in the cooker for a good long time. The way the cooker is designed, it's just, it's heat. It does well, you know, just making heat. That's what a cooker is supposed to do. Now, making changes on the fly with the cooker is easy to do. It's easy just to hit your time temp, make a change, and it take and just continue to cook on the fly with your changes. I do like that. Now, this cooker has a very long preheat cycle when you're cooking and you want to use a preheat. So you're talking like five to 10 minutes preheat depending on your temperature and such. It does have a means to easily skip the preheat. You can just hit the preheat button while it's in preheat and then it'll say add food and you can just open the lid 
and you know add your food or if it's already in there just open the lid real quick and close it and so that's a good way to skip preheat if you want to skip preheat your outcome is going to be better if you go through the full preheat but you can skip the preheat and it's just something to keep in mind that it has a very long preheat as far as cookers go with preheats now something that's really good about this cooker and that every cooker should have is that it has an auto pause door when you open the lid things automatically pause the cook automatically pauses every cooker ever made should have that feature and this cooker has it and it should just be standard and so that's cool I always like to point that out because you don't want to have to open up a cooker and hot air still blowing on you or something or you're like oh I gotta make sure to hit this button before I open up it's nice when the cooker just recognizes it's open and stops the user interface on this cooker is pretty easy to use and understand as I mentioned earlier with it having the dial where you have to spin 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 that can be a little bit of a hassle spin spin spinning but it's easy to understand the interface is easy to use now the meat probe as far as using that for cooking that goes very smoothly the meat probe works out well the presets are nice so I like the meat probe cooking with this cooker it always worked out very well for me and then they even give you the five minute countdown for resting letting things reabsorb juices letting a little carryover heat kick in it's very nice and so as far as probe cooking using the meat probe it's very nice now as far as smoke I had zero smoke issues with this cooker even when literally grilling with butter and I do have a cook coming up where I'll be showing a cook where I literally covered the meat in butter and grilled with it and had zero smoke issues very nice now as far as noise this cooker is a loud cooker it's loud it makes noise and you know I'm not gonna give a decibel read or you know there are people who want all types of specifics on sound I'm just gonna say it's a louder louder cooker it's one of the louder ones so as far as cookers I've used and I've used well over 50 cookers I've lost count but loud it's a loud cooker so especially the fan gets going in there it's a loud cooker that, that's just the way it is now as far as the different cooking functions as far as the grill function it's great it's fabulous as a grill it does a wonderful job you can get some nice sear marks on your meat you can basically it's like a propane grill indoors in my opinion it, it's on par with my outdoor uh, propane gas grill I don't have to go out to the propane gas grill if it's something that will fit in here I can put it right in here and for you who like grilling in the whole outdoor game I do have another channel called D space grill D grill you can see all types of grilling on that channel but next function I want to talk about is the roast function and the roast function it does a good job it doesn't overcook the heat seems to come from the top it doesn't dry out the food now it's key why I'm saying that roast doesn't dry out food because I'll be talking about another function in a bit that does in my opinion but the heat for roast all seems to come from the top I'm not sure of heat coming from the bottom at all when it's doing roast and that's probably why you can just if you're gonna roast something put it right on the grill bottom and you don't have to worry about the grill bottom you know overheating or something like that from my experience now I didn't use broil I didn't have a need to use broil but I mean ninja and broil always works out good heat comes from the top you know it it's broil I'm, I'm sure it works but no I didn't get to use it now the next function I want to talk about is bake now bake cooks basically all from the top from my experience I when I cooked like some cookies I, I showed in an earlier video I cooked some homemade cookies some lemon almond cookies the bottoms of those cookies were totally clear I mean not clear but totally light uncooked bottom tops totally cooked heat coming down no assistance heat from the bottom so that's just something to keep in mind you can use the griddle plate as a sheet pan and I did in that cookie cook I use the grill plate as a sheet pan and so it works out really nice to 
be able to do a bake and use that as your sheet pan. But you do need to remember that your heat's coming all from the top. And so it's going to probably overcook the top. And it does seem to dry things out a little bit. It, things get a little drier, in my opinion, with bake than they do with roast. I, just my impression. Now, the barbecue griddle, when you use the griddle plate, and actually I, I called it the sear plate. I meant the griddle plate. I guess I'm getting mixed up with the dual heat oven, which has also been reviewed on this channel. But the griddle plate you can use on uh, bake is like a flat surface for baking. And the griddle plate works fabulous in griddle mode. You can basically always make sure that you have to always make sure that the griddle is flat. So I want to show you when you put it in, you want to make sure that when you put it in, as you put it in, make sure things are, are looking flat and even. If things don't look flat and even, then you need to turn it around and spin it the other way to make sure that things are flat and even. If you put things on this griddle plate and they're sliding off or sliding down, downward, then you don't have it in right. So always make sure the griddle plate is in and set flat when you use it and you'll put your stuff on there and it'll set real nice and flat and grill real nice. I will say in the initial review, I grilled up some eggs and took a good while to grill the eggs and actually I found out the problem was that I was opening the, leaving the door open. When you use the griddle, close this cooker when you use the griddle. Close it. When you put some eggs in here, after things are preheated to about 350, and you can just put some cooking spray down on your griddle plate and basically cook them for about three to four minutes. Close the lid, about 350, three to four minutes. You get some perfectly fried eggs. They come out real nice. And so the griddle plate is also very non-stick, even if you don't use oil, but I like to use the a little like extra light olive oil sprayable extra light olive oil just to make it all real easy to work with so you can use this and i use it all the time to grill eggs and make toast and all that types of good stuff you can grill toast on here like butter up your toast and put the buttered side down while you got your eggs here so you got your eggs here you got your buttered toast here on 350 after the preheat do the full preheat and then put it on here and let it go for three four minutes and you'll have some nice grilled toast and some nice grilled eggs. Comes out real nice. Now, air crisp, as far as the air crisp function, it's a basket air fryer. It's a nice basket air fryer. It's on par with other basket air fryers in that regard. You can also, if you want to do toast using air crisp, you can just put it on like 450. Try a few minutes in the air fried basket or air crisp basket. And see what you get. You'll probably have to play with time based on your bread or toast to get what you like, but play around with that. Dehydrate, I did not use. It's just a smaller cooker, so I really didn't have anything small to test dehydration with. So, just wanted to talk about uh, cleaning with the cooker. As far as cleaning, cleaning's pretty hassle free, no issues at all with uh, cleaning everything is very non-stick so works out real nice now i want to show you as far as cleaning goes you can see inside how things stayed pretty clean overall the fan guard there i would take this out and put it in the top rack on my dishwasher to wash that everything else i washed by hand personally i prefer to wash things by hand i don't like to put things in the dishwasher as far as these cookers go but I detail what you can and can't put in the dishwasher in my initial review but I prefer to wash everything by hand but that fan guard I did put that in a top rack of the dishwasher whenever I washed it and so things stay really clean as far as I'm concerned in the cooker any little stains in the cooker I don't mind I don't care I don't worry about it now I want to talk about comparisons of this cooker with others and I want to mention that I'll compare with some. If I don't mention a cooker that you're interested in, you'll have to look at the other reviews and videos here on the channel to make your own determination. And these are all just my personal views and opinions. I really, honestly, I like showing you these cookers and I like showing you how to use these cookers. I like showing you what these cookers can do. 
but I don't like people relying on my opinion for their money. Rely on your own opinion for your money. Do your research, continue to research, and find what you like and what you prefer. I don't want people buying what I like and what I prefer because what I like and prefer, it may not be best for you, and it is a decision, it's the decision for you to make. It's not my decision, it's your decision. So, you know, I offer my insight and my experience, but at the same time, I really, really hope that everyone really just makes their own decision. And, you know, there are some people who really don't like things that I like and people who really like things that I don't like so much. But I like that people think for themselves as far as their own decision making and not just going off and, and doing because someone else said or because I said. So <laughs> that's just my take there. Now, compared to the Ninja Foodi Smart XL Indoor Grill and Air Fryer, the previous model of this cooker, and that's been fully reviewed here on this channel as well. This one has the griddle, so having the griddle makes it better. And it can do everything the previous one did and has the griddle. And if you never you think you'll use the griddle, you can still use it as a flat surface for baking. And you may over time find uses for the griddle if you have the griddle. So I see no reason to get the previous model when there's this model. I know some people have concerns that this model has a small little uh, drip area down in the front. It's got a little, maybe about an inch for drainage and drippings. Some people get worked up about that. I really, I don't care about that at all. Some people are upset that it has a small slant and they feel everything's gonna slide to the front. I did not experience having everything slide to the front like that. That wasn't my experience. The things stay up higher where you put them and that little inch for drainage, I had no problem with it. I actually thought it's a pretty decent thing to have to have things just kind of slightly slant and have things drain into a nice little drain and you can just do your grilling and such like that. I like it. I'm good with it. So as far as this versus the previous model, I'd take this model all day long because to me it's just better overall. Now since this cooker does do a lot of other various things, I'm going to compare it to some other cookers too, but I do want to compare it with one other indoor grill. And that's the Power Smokeless Grill XL that I reviewed here earlier on this channel, which was the older model of that cooker. The Ninja is better. It cooks more evenly. It cooks faster. It's just better. It's not as large as the Power Smokeless Grill XL, but it does a better job, a way, way, way better job in my opinion. So I definitely prefer the Ninja to the uh, Power Grill Smoke Power Smokeless Grill XL. Now versus basket air fryers, as I mentioned, this is a basket air fryer when it's doing the air crisp thing. It works just as well as basket air fryer, but I prefer this because it can do more. It can do the grilling, it can do griddle, it can do it all. So definitely prefer it. Now versus my champ of cookers and still my champ of cookers, the Ninja Foodi XL Pro air fry oven. This cooker, by comparison, I'll say that I'll take the Ninja Foodi XL Pro air fry oven. And the reason why I'll take it is because the oven can hold more. It remembers settings. Remember my rant about not remembering settings in this cooker. It bakes really well, and it doesn't have as long a preheat. So, my champ of cookers still remains the Ninja Foodi XL Pro air fry oven. So that's all for all the comparisons. I will say in the video description, there are lots of ways to help this channel if you like the work that I'm doing. I have a cookbook that you can buy and there's a link for that. There's ways to make donations, referral links for things like this cooker. You want to buy it, you pay the same price, but help this channel when you use the referral link. There's memberships, there's merch. So lots of ways to help out, and all is appreciated. And nothing in this video is sponsored. Nothing in any of my videos is sponsored. And as I always say, if I didn't say that nothing in the video is sponsored in the video, it's only because I forgot that nothing in that video is sponsored either.
So, basically, that's all for the review of this cooker. I hope that you did like it. And if you did like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Share the video with a friend. Leave your comments. Subscribe. Hit that notification icon. And good eating.